Hello guys, uh, on African Motives, uh, still on engineering science and for uh, working on uh, revisions from past exam papers, uh, that is uh, from the November 2020 question paper. In this case, we are going to be focusing on question uh, two, that is angular motion. All right, so we are given the first part without wasting much of our time on question 2.1, that was to define angular velocity. All right, as you know, guys, uh, angular velocity is uh, actually uh, displacement over displacement over time. So we can actually define this as uh, is the rate of change. So you can have this as is the rate of change, the rate of change of angular displacement of angular displacement. That is uh, angular uh, displacement in this case. All right, so that's our definition in this case in simple terms. From the formula that we know, then we can have our definition from there. All right, so that was actually one mark for that. In uh, question 2.2, we are now given uh, the wheel of uh, a motorbike as a diameter of uh, 50 centimeters and accelerates from four rad per second. So take note here, we are given the diameter. It accelerates from the initial velocity of 4 rad per second to 10 rad per second in 10 seconds. So let's take our information here. We are given, uh, that's 2.2. So we're given the diameter. Uh, in this case, we have got our diameter of 50 centimeters. So the diameter was 50 centimeters, of which we have, we have to convert to meters, divide by 100, that's 0 0.5 in meters. And if you consider this side here, we also have got where it was taken from, the acceleration was taken from a velocity of, which is the four rad per second, our angular velocity initial, that is our omega one, and this one, our omega two, two, that is to the final of 10 rad per second. So these are velocities, which is angular velocity. So we've got uh, the first one, initial velocity of uh, four rad per second, then our omega 2, which is the final velocity of 10 rad per second. And also we are given the time frame between this that it was uh, 10 seconds. All right. So if this is taken in the time frame of 10 seconds, the question is for us now to calculate the following on 2.21, the angular acceleration of the wheel, which is uh, actually taken from the change in angular uh, the change in angular velocity, that is the rate of change of angular velocity in this case. All right, so that is 2.21. So the angular acceleration from the rate of change of velocity, which can be given as omega 2 minus omega 1 over the given time, the time frame between. So that is uh, our alpha measured in rad per square second. So we also need to know the units of measurement there. So omega two, uh, that is our final velocity of 10 minus the initial of four over the total time that is uh, 10 seconds. So if we divide this uh, from your calculator direct, uh, that is going to be 0 0.6 uh, rad per square second. All right, so that is uh, the first part of the question 2.21 to calculate the angular acceleration and uh, each mark is actually having two, each part is actually having two marks there. All right, 2.22, the angular displacement of the wheel in radians, the angular displacement, that is our theta. So theta in radians. So in this case, we are to calculate theta, but from which formula, which is the best formula that we can use uh, with this information, we have got uh, angular acceleration, we have got the time, uh, the speeds, that is the, initial and the final speed. We can have our theta from this formula that theta is equivalent to omega one plus omega two over two times the time. So like this, we can actually obtain our theta in radians, or we can use this formula. Theta is equivalent to omega one times T plus half alpha T squared, which is the angular acceleration times T squared. So any formula can actually give us uh, theta, which is measured in radians. So our theta, in this case, I'm going to apply the first formula. So from this formula, we can substitute our values. In this case, we've got everything that we need. So I'm going to use the first formula in this case, this one. So meaning to say, 
uh, my theta is going to be omega one, uh, which is four. So I'm going to have four plus omega two, which is 10. So that's 10, uh, everything over two times the given time, which is the time here of 10 seconds. So this gives us the direct, why do I apply this formula most of the time? Because these are the values that you're given. So this gives you the exact answer. Instead of having the other value that you calculate, you can obtain that. But uh, in this case, it's an advantage for this one because here we didn't round off this. We got an exact answer. So it's not going to affect our answer. We are going to have exactly the same answer that you're going to obtain even if you are to use the formula which uses uh, angular acceleration. Okay, so our theta here is going to be 70 rad, which is 70 radians so this is our theta the angular acceleration which is measured in radians then from there in this same particular time frame that we are we are given we are now asked to calculate the number of revolutions completed by the wheel this in this time frame okay number of revolutions revolutions guys we are saying a complete revolution is equivalent to 360 degrees. Also, I want to correct this part because the way that it was presented also in your memo is not exactly how we are supposed to have this. Remember that, okay, let me explain this way, 2.23. In a complete revolution, this is what you need to know. A complete revolution uh, is actually equivalent to 360 degrees. That's a complete uh, revolution in this case, one rev is equivalent to 360 degrees. But we know that 360 degrees can be equated to radians, which is equivalent to two pi rad. So meaning to say, in order for you to obtain the number of revolutions, you can play around even with the pi that you are given because a revolution is equivalent to two pi radians because here we are given our theta, the displacement in radians. So we can take advantage of that to say one revolution, uh, that is one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. What about from the 70 radians that we have, how many revolutions are we going to obtain from the 70 rad? How many revolutions are there? Because this 70 was obtained in within the time frame of 10 seconds. So that's where we ob obtained this. So how many revolutions have we completed between this? So we can actually divide here since we want 70. So it's simply 70 over 120 times what? Uh, 70 over two pi times one rev. So this is going to be 70 divided by two pi times one revolution. So this is going to give us the number of revolutions which were completed, which is uh, something like uh, 11, 1408 uh, and so on. So this actually approximates to 11 revolutions. So you can just say uh, 11 revs. That is for the number of revolutions, or you can even write your three decimal places since you're giving your answer through three decimal places. But since you are representing number of re complete revolutions, we can say we completed 11 revolutions in this case. All right. So that is how you can attempt these typical questions, guys. As you can see, uh, all you need is to have your information, write down your information properly, then use the information that you're given uh, with the corresponding formula. So that was our question 2.33. 2.23. Now on question 2.3, we are given that the force that is uh, of uh, 600 Newton is applied to the end of a spanner. So from this spanner, we are given a force of uh, 600 Newton, which was being applied in this case. The perpendicular distance between the nut and the working line across is 30 centimeters, which is our R in this case, the perpendicular distance of uh, 30 centimeters. If we convert this to meters, divide by 100, that's 0 0.3. Remember in a meter, we've got 100 centimeters. So the first part of the question, which is 2.31 was to calculate the torque of the spanner. So the torque of the spanner is simply equivalent to the force times the perpendicular distance r. If you are not given an angle like this part, there is no angle that is given. So you're just going to use force times the perpendicular distance. So that's our torque in this case, a force of 600 multiplied 
to the perpendicular distance of 0, 0,3 can give us the torque in this case. So this is going to give us uh, a torque of, okay, so if you simplify properly 600 times uh, 0, 0,3, uh, this is going to be 180. So we are going to obtain 180 uh, Newton meter in this case. So that is how we can calculate the torque for a given uh, spanner. Then if you check on 2.32, 2 it is now the work done when the nut is turned, take note, it is turned through an angle of 60 degrees and we are supposed to calculate the work done from there. Okay, so remember that the work done can be calculated from the torque that we have, but we must have the angle, which is the theta that we are given uh, is supposed to be in radians. So we are supposed to have this in radians in order for us to have the work done. Okay, so what's the formula that we have? Remember that the work done is going to be taken from the torque times the angle theta. So this is T times theta or T theta or T times theta like this, which is torque times theta. Remember T, that's our torque, we calculated this, but the theta now is supposed to be in radians. So depending on how do you convert from degrees to radians, but you're supposed to have this in radians. So you can actually use the conversion of uh, uh, pi being equivalent to 180 degrees, or since we told, we said, uh, actually 360 degrees is equal to two pi radians from the previous part. So you can even ask yourself, what about the 60 degrees? If 360 is equal to pi or to two pi, or you can even use uh, this concept to say uh, pi is equivalent to 180 degrees, or you can simply say any angle that is in degrees can actually be converted to radians if you divide by 57.3, simple like that, All right? So this is 60 degrees. What are we going to have in radians? These are radians. So we're going to have our answer 60 divided by uh, 360 times 2 pi gives us our answer in radians, which is going to be pi over 3. The same thing here, 60 degrees in radians is going to give us 60 over pi, uh, 60 over 180 uh, times pi, which is going to be uh, pi over 3. Still, that's what you're going to have uh as pi over three which is in radians so this is going to give us the work done so our work done is going to be the torque that we got before which is 180 so here we got a torque of 180 so we are going to multiply uh this here that's 180 times the theta that we got in radians remember we got uh pi over three from this one in radians okay so this is now in radians pi over three so this gives us uh, the work done direct. Okay, so if you have to simplify, this is going to give us 60 pi. Uh, 60 pi is just same as uh, 188 as a decimal. That's 188 comma 496. Remember, this is work done, which is measured in, in joules. Yes, you can write in kilojoules, but this one, it's best for you to write in joules just like that, because if you write in kilo, it is going to be a decimal of which you avoid working with the zero comma on our final answer. So this is the best answer that you can actually have on your presentation. All right, so these are the typical questions that you're going to be given. So that's what we had on question number three. Uh, on question number two, which is on angular motion. And this question was actually having, I think it was uh, 11 or something, 11 marks, the six, four, and the one, that was a total of 11 marks. So this, these are the questions that you're going to be asked. And typically uh, they ask this way. So you have to, play around uh, with your formulas. Yes, try to apply your formulas as much as you can. You can be able to attempt any question that is on angular motion. All right, for now, that's it, guys, uh, from Amazon African Motives. Till we meet again.